Hello everyone, welcome to uh, the latest video. So you're probably thinking, uh, Lewis, you've already made a Templar video this patch. Um, yeah, so the last quick, quick brief rundown. The last patch, uh, the last video I done for this patch for the stamina Templar. I really feel it wasn't my best work, and everyone who knows me, they know how much I've grinded and put my hours in on the Templar. And to see it take such a hit the way it did, it kind of, it, I was a little bit good. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I've played around with it and I have to give a big shout out to Asias, his, uh, I'm going to link his YouTube in the description below for this, um, kind of the inspiration I got from his video, um, I'll link his channel and I'll link the specific video I watched to kind of give me the inspiration for my vid and I've kind of, I've went along the same route as him in regards to coming away from either being stamina or magic air based and kind of just going all around a hybrid role. Now, well, you'll, you, if you go watch his vid and then you watch this vid or whichever way you do it, you'll notice there's some differences, some similarities. Honestly, pick the best out of the two if you can and just fix, find what works best for you and your personal playstyle. I am going to play that a little bit different than Isaiah, so obviously I build it a little different. And obviously, depending on the race, you know, race change tokens aren't cheap. So, you know, you might look at one video and go, oh, you know, he's a Khajiit on his or I'm an Imperial on mine. And, you know, we both have to make our builds. Uh, slightly different not in, in terms of skills or anything like that the skills pretty much stay the same but in regards to you know you sort of like how you build your stats and stuff like that like for example i do not get the try recovery stat that a khajiit passively does from being an imperial but the benefits i take are you know the likes of my six percent skill reduction so you need to look at different things first and you know you find what works for yourself best but this is going to be, this is what I'm pretty much changing my Templar into. This is on the live server. This isn't a PTS kind of best in slot build. This is actually kind of what I found works for me. So here's our basic character sheet here. Now you can see I don't have the food on right now. Um, that must have just run out there as I've loaded up the video. Or uh, loaded up the game to, to record this. This is what our stats are looking at without food. Um, this is with CP and everything goes so for... This is kind of what you're going to aim for, and then the food we're going to be running is Mosorga's Fair Hunch. Or potentially, if you want, if you, depending on your race, again, you might have decent Magicka recovery. So then you only need to pump up your health and your stamina recovery. Mosorga's Trifle tri 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 Pocket is a really good one. It gives you extra health and stamina recovery, but it doesn't give you the... Magic recovery that was always spare punch would. It does give you more health and more recovery. Okay. We can look at that and we can see kind of what our numbers are like. I'm sitting at 30,000 health um, with 12 into health. Um, I say this on all my videos, guys. So if you are. If you wanted to aim for a number in your health, do your attribute points last. Respect the attributes to zero and then see where you're at because you might not have. You might have better quality gear than me. You might have not as good quality gear. Um, so I'm, you know, little things will change. You might not be able to afford prismatics, for example, and you might want to run, like, you might want to mix it up with health glyphs or stamina glyphs. So obviously I find 30,000 is the perfect little sweet spot, along with having 15,000 magic air and 23,000 stamina is decent. But basically what you need to do is it pretty much... If you're, if you're gonna call, if you're gonna follow this build, sort of word for word with stats and everything, wait until the end to your if you points, and then just put as much into health to get thirty thousand, and then put the rest into your stamina. We're not actually gonna be putting anything into magic. Yes, this is a hybrid build, but um, fifteen thousand is fine for what we needed for. Okay, so we put the rest into our stamina because we are still probably a stamina based race. Um, we gain extra stamina, we gain extra health by being an imperial. So again, I don't need as many health points as a uh, Khajiit would, for example, uh, to get that 30,000 spot, just from being an Imperial, right? The Mundus Storm we're using is the Shadow, increases our crit dan damage and our crit healing. Really good because, again, I'll go into it a little bit more in the video, but we don't use a burst heal. We only use hot heal over times. So um, having this helps, obviously, it helps output our crit damage. You can see our crit sitting here quite nicely at 37.4%. Um, Along with, you know, having our major prophecy and savagery active at all times, increasing our crit rating and chance well by 12%. Um, and we're going to, you know, buff them up a little bit more when we get minor force and stuff like that and so on. 
So yeah, that's kind of uh, being a werewolf makes absolutely no difference for this build as well. By the way, this does not matter in any way, shape, or form. Do not think you need to be a werewolf. Uh, again, on the Sias's build that I watched, he was vampire stage two. I get. I don't. I personally avoid werewolf or vampire in in majority of my vids. If I'm being completely honest, I like just stay mortal and that's it. I have werewolf just for PVE kind of dungeon runs and that's it. Really, I very rarely get the werewolf out in PVP. But anyway, we'll move on to the skills that we have here. So. I suppose that off a second. Um, so first off, on our front, our our front bar or our offensive bar, we are running orders wrath. Now another option you could run here is mechanical acuity. I was running mechanical acuity on my stamina sorcerer, and it was running quite well. And I think Asias runs uh, stam sorc on his uh, templar as well, but. I've been using Order's Wrath kind of since it came out. I've tried it on a few builds and I absolutely love it as an offensive set, especially if you're building in towards crit. Again, you know, if you really want to build in towards crit, you would be a Khajiit, not an Imperial, but I'm I'm not bothering with it changing my race. I find Imperial doesn't get touched too much and it's it has a nice little balance of health and stamina there, um, so you don't have to worry about it too much. So, yeah, again, sorry, we can, you know, we take this, we take these two maces, um, you could also, uh, another optional uh, option here, optional option is you could use your, you could use axes rather than maces if you don't mind having less pen and it'll help up crit a little bit. Axes help crit, maces help pen. So again, it's just entirely kind of personal choice on this. I run the maces because I find my crit, you know, when I'm in a battle and with buffs from my group and stuff like that, my crit was high enough to do the damage I want along with my actual uh, spell damage as well. So I find having just an, a nice little 6,500 crit, uh, 6,500 pen on our base stat is quite nice. Pen's still a really good um, a, a, a stat to look at when doing PvP. And I don't want to completely disregard it, even though now the meta is shifting more towards crit than it ever has in the past. Or for a very long time, anyway. So again, yeah, we're sticking with Maces of Order's Wrath here. Uh, one Nurn Horned on the main hand, then Sharpened on the back hand, again increasing that pen a little bit. And this increases just the overall damage of the weapon. And then we've got Befouled and Charged. Uh, the enchantments don't particularly matter too much. I would always just recommend at least one Charged just to help deal the shock, of shock damage and as well as chance to apply a status effect, which really helps. Our other pieces for Order's Wrath are just three body pieces, all medium, all in pen, all with tri-stat. Uh, boots, legs, and hands. In pen again, help them with that crit resistance. Our crit resistance gets up to like 3,000 fully buff, which is... You, like, you are... No one's one-shotting you with that kind of defense, along with our resistances. I've made this build a lot tankier than I previously have with this build. And I... Sometimes... Don't get me wrong. You, you're still going to get Zerg. You're still going to get them perfect combos that groups land on you with their meteors or whatever you st i'm not saying you're going to be unstoppable but it is i feel like now when i die it's very rare i'm like oh shit where did that come from I'm, i i i survive a lot longer now and because of the crit and our crit healing we get even our heal over times they pop our health back up ridiculous amount so where the impends on there you could run divines or something if you really want to and help push up the actual crit damage and crit healing you do from the Munderstone. But I find having two divines on the what we'll go into next, the Munster set, works lovely for me. Um, we actually have three divines, but I'll just to do the Munster set now. Again, both these Christat enchant, uh, Balorg, really good. You get weapon damage and you get um, basically a full 500 ultimate will basically give you... Um, what is it? It's 23 times the amount of your pen, right? It also ups your damage by, by the total amount of ultimate consumed. So 500 is going to take that over 5,000 before any other procs. Um, but you're going to get 23 times the amount. It doesn't last too long. It obviously lasts longer now since they changed the way dots and things work. Um, but in fact, actually, no, I don't think this, this came under the dots or anything. So I think it's bang on the same. It's still 12 seconds. Um, I feel like it's always been 12 seconds, as I've said that out loud. But yeah, that might not have changed. But again, 12 seconds, long enough for you to get a good burst in. All right. Our back bar set, our defensive set, we're actually running Rallying Cry. 
best in slot here. I don't actually have a one at the moment. I need to go see if I can buy one. Or, but it, again, it's finding one with the right trade. But uh, Resto Staff would be the perfect option for you here. Um, I'm using the Greatsword because I had a Rallying Gride Greatsword defending. On the skills, we don't actually use any Resto Staff or... Um, or... Um, like skills uh, from the Resto Staff or Greatsword Staff of Greatsword skills. So they don't matter as much. I just had a Rallying Gride Greatsword defending. Any kind of back bar weapon with a defending and a weapon damage enchant, you're going to be golden, okay? I've been running it with the Greatsword in a few BGs now, and honestly, it's not been too bad. I can see the kind of difference, like, where a Resto Staff would have came in a bit better. Don't get me wrong. So I do think I'm going to invest in a Resto Staff. On the build video, on the build link in the description before, that will have the best in slot gear, by the way, below. But please do still continue to watch this video because I'm going to show you the combo you need to do to kind of pull this off at the end. Because it's built a certain way, this build, right? You can't just copy this build and then go running all over the shop, just spamming jabs like you probably once could. We, we can't do that anymore. We've had to build it a certain way now. So again, yeah, any back bar weapon with it, you will go sword and shield as well, if again, if you really wanted to, uh, for the sword and shield ult. Um, works out lovely. But again, we're not too bothered right now. Um, rallying ground, great sword, defending, weapon damage enchant. As long as you've got defending, you're getting that extra resistance and you're getting that weapon damage when you hit. Uh, you're getting that weapon damage enchant when you hit someone for five seconds, then you are golden. Obviously, again, you could probably use a bow, in fact, here as well, because you basically want something rangy. Um, obviously, I'm having to get in a bit closer than I'd like at the moment with the Great Sword. If you have, like, a Resto Staff, if you heavy attack them, you're also procking your weapon damage enchant. Or, again, a bow might also come in handy here. I've never really thought of a bow till I've said it there. But either way, we're going Rally and Cry. Whatever you do, regardless, we're running Rally and Cry. Now, Rally and Cry is only active when you're in Cyrodiil or Battlegrounds or Imperial City. It's got to be when Battle Spirit is active, okay? But if really any healing you do, which again, we've kind of built around that so it works well. Um, critically healing yourself or an ally causes you and up to 11 other group members within 12 meters to gain 293 uh, weapon and spell damage and 16, 11 crit resistance for 20 seconds. Okay, there you can see there with the crit resistance on there, with that active, again, like let's say we use this in a BG for example, you're not spreading it around a load of people obviously it does differ the crit resistance differ by 81 depending on how many people are affected for a bg there's only three other people that could potentially be affected but you're still going to hit around 3000 crit resistance right having this active and the great thing is again when doing any kind of build any back bar set you want you always want to make sure that that buff that you get from the back bar set carries over to your front bar when you swap okay so again this does it lasts for 15 seconds and obviously you can just re it whenever you want it's fast so Doing that, um, having that on the back bar really helped, really strong set. Um, I, I love Rallying Cry at the moment. I think it's, it's it's kind of embedded itself in the meta well, and I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be here a while. It's really uh, worth investing in it. Um, you can see like, I've got a gold great sword here. I'm probably gonna try and get a gold rest or staff. If I'm being totally honest. Um, where we put that, we put again gold. I haven't uh, golded out the orders wrath yet. To be honest, I'm you know I'm not the best at that. I've not even golded out my balog. That's how bad I am. But hey ho, um, rallying cry. We got what? It, it's a light piece. It's light piece. Set, so we just put one piece on the body uh, to get our extra undaunted metal passive, which is really good. Um, it's divines, and we got tri stat enchant, and we just put it on the belt, so it's not affecting our armor rating too much by putting it on one of the smaller pieces. And then you've got your two pieces of jewelry. Okay, uh, both infused, both spell damage. Jobs are good. Uh, if you're gonna you know start golding stuff out, I bought this gold. Um, I didn't actually get it, but these. I'm in the process of holding. You should always do weapons, then jewelry before you kind of focus on your your armor. Okay, to get the most out of your uh, enchantments and traits and so on. So your two pieces on your jewelry, your one piece on your body, and then two pieces are on your back bar. There. Okay, uh, infused spell damage. I, don't know if I think I went through that, and then divine try start enchant. We got a one piece tree and E, or again you can just use gallant chain because it comes as reinforced. If not, you want to have to get an armor of the tree and E heavy body, um, and you want to transmute it to reinforced if you can. I'm not sure if Armor of the Trinity actually has a chance to drop his reinforced, or, or if it does or not, I'm not too sure. Uh, Gallant Chain's always a safe bet because it's always reinforced, and you can pick it up in Guild Traders. I'm not sure how much it costs. I've, had, I've got two of these, and I've had them here, just so I'm not too sure. Um, but again, having the gold reinforced with tri and Enchant really, really helped. Okay. Um, and then, what else we got? Uh, yeah, Marken. So again, a uh, slight change from a Sizes build. Uh, Sizes running Sea Serpent's Coil here. He would actually use two Rallying Cry Rings and then Sea Serpent's Coil there. 
Um, season to go, it, it, I think it is starting to fit into the meta quite well here. Um, I think it would be really good. I haven't myself grinded for it yet. Um, I only have one of the leads so far, so it is something I'm going to look at and see if I can make it work within the build. But for me personally, I would. I, I'm running marking infused with a stamina recovery enchantment works out perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so there's your gear, right? I believe that's everything I've run through. You can see it all there quickly. I'll just run through them all so you can check the traits and so on and so forth. Uh, you don't really need to match the traits to each specific thing, but you want to have like three divines, three in pen, and one reinforced. I find works well for me. Um, all three infused. You could run one bloodthirsty here if you really want to, uh, just to get the extra damage when they're under 90% health. I think that always is nice. Um, I think Mark and my bum is bloodthirsty. I Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it comes as bloodthirsty. I personally transferred it into infused. Just when I've been testing stuff in the past, maybe that would be worth working back to bloodthirsty, but we'll, we'll find out. Um, I just went to have a quick look there at the transmute station, but it doesn't actually tell you, so I'm not too sure. But if it does come bloodthirsty or whatever, then, you know, get it. Keep it at bloodthirsty. I personally would recommend that. Anyway, I'm going to move on to the skills now. I know we're in a different location here, but it'll, it's fine. Who cares about continuity anyway? So, uh, back, bar, back bar skills, just so I... Our three major buffs we're going to have up at all times is our race against time, our restoring focus, and our living dark. Um, again, I haven't even got this fully leveled up yet, but we'll get there. No, but not I'm sure about it. But again, race against time expedition. Obviously, the speed, the minor force, which gives us um, percentage of our crit, which is really good, helps bump up our crit even more. Um, by 10%, obviously major force would do 20%, but we can't really get a major force buff on here. So, minor I'll have to do for now. Um, obviously, activating this ability removes all the snares and immobilization and grants immunity to them as well, which works out really nice. Our major um, resolve buff here, restoring focus, this also gives us stamina back. So, you notice on the stat sheet here, um, when we buff up with our pot, we get 1700 and 1100, okay? Now, you can put your rune down, your numbers won't go up, but you are going to gain stamina back as it's happening, okay? So it is helping push your stamina back up, and it is giving you more stamina, but it doesn't actually buff your stamina recovery, it's just what the skill itself does. Standing in it as well gives you health recovery, okay? So again, you build that house and you help, your, your health and your stamina are constantly regenerating, even though the physical numbers on your character sheet aren't, you know really changing that much so when you see there 1700 you think oh, i might be a little bit lower for the stamina recovery um honestly trust me with this down as well it works out fine okay um and then obviously living dark again just you know give us our sphere our little bubble um anyone who attacks us you know it'll lash back at them and the movement speeds uh forward by 40 percent for three seconds again helping stick people in their tracks so we can attack with the burst it raises caltrops um Again, this is for our major breach, which lowers people's resistance and also, again, reduces their movement speed by 50%. These stack on each other, so really you can reduce someone's movement speed by 90%. If they hit you and you're, like, surrounding them with caltrops, their movement speed is lowered by 90%, just making them stuck. And if you've got your restoring focus up, as they're hitting you, you're probably getting your health back anyway, as long as you're stood within it. So, honestly, you know, it's a good little setup to have here. Obviously, have raised a contaminant for the force when you attack back as well. Use the force, Luke. Um, and then we just have this here as our cleanse. Um, you know, just be careful. If people are running Plague Break, a lot of people are still running Plague Break at the moment. I've personally came away from it myself, but it does still work out quite well. Um, you know, for like any kind of poison related builds. Stamina Necro, Stamina Dragonite, stuff like that. Um, just be careful when using this. If you cleanse it, you cleanse yourself, Plague Break will explode on you. So don't do it when you have low health. Because I have made that mistake many a time just out of pure habit. And you've got to really train yourself into not doing it. Alright. Uh, when we're getting offensive now, so we're attacking people, so number one, we don't even actually use it, we just have it slotted here, because when it's slotted, we gain our major savagery and prophecy, again, in increasing that crit rating by 2629, and we also gain minor berserk if we happen to deal uh, damage from someone's flank, which is perfect, okay? Really good. Now, purifying light, again, this is our first kind of opening attack, we'll apply this, this is our dot, it will copy up to 15,583, and that value is based on your spell damage. Bear in mind, you know, if you've got your thing, if you've got your spell damage procked up, then you apply this, that number's going to be higher. Having this on top of them, we will attack them with our biting jabs. Again, I'll explain the combo fully in a second. We've got biting jabs here. Main reason we're still using this, I know it's not really that good anymore. 
but it does give us our major and uh, major sorcery and major brutality. Um, which again, the reason we push into spell damage because being a Templar, we get major sorcery from here, which gives us more uh, spell damage. And then, which uh, these ones, when we have our Dawn's Wrath ability um, here, which is purifying light, we get illuminate, which actually gives us minus sorcery as well. So we pump up our spell damage even more. Okay, so having this active is really important. Having both these skills active is really important, okay? And then this is our execute reading oppression. Now that we're moving to hybridize, we can afford to use a bit more of our magic based abilities. You know, we deal 500% more damage to enemies below 50% health. Really good. You know, you could, as long as you get someone around 20, 30% health, their health just ticks down when you hit them with this and it's good. And then resolving vigor. I have this on my offensive bar now because I use it, it, I basically use it as a burst heal, even though it's not. It's a heal over time. But it now gives us minor resolve as well, so increases our physical and spell resistance. We stack that with major resolve as well, okay? Pushing up our resistance even fully higher, okay? And then we have Dawnbreaker of Smiting um, as our ultimate. So to quickly run through... Oh, but on the back bar as well, again, if you're using uh, Resto Staff, you could put the uh, Resto Staff um, ultimate in here, really good ultimate. Or if you're running Sword and Bone, you can put the Shield uh, Spell Wall in here, again, really good ultimate. Um, but for me, I just use Remembrance. Um, or you could put potentially Temporal Guard in there as well. Just a little get out of jail free card. So, we're going to buff up. Fuck. So, there 28,000 resistance and then if you get rallying cry active as well the crit resistance is going to go about 3,000 remember that I can't activate rallying cry right now because I need to have battle spirit active which obviously I can't get unless I'm in a pvp for one you'll see it um, in the gameplay at the end of the video anyway so make sure you get your minor resolve as well back bar we're at 28,000 from bar we're about 25,000 really high resistance is there Again, along with 3,000 crit resistance, you're a fucking walking tank, right? Now, the combo you want to do. So, have your buffs up, get everything ready. You know, apply this. Purifying light, then run in. Dawn break. Yeah, just... Da, 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 da. Obviously, bear in mind, you won't need to jab as much on someone. But then 18,000 pen there as well. 6,500 damage. You've seen that before. It dropped off. That was the Balog leaving us there. Um, spell damage still stays over 5,000 for a fair little bit of time. Again, remember, with Rallying Cry, that's going to be slightly higher as well. But if you've noticed, when we had Balog up, we had about 18,000 pen as well. So that's why I use my ultimate early. I, don't, I use the ultimate as more of an opener. So it's a case of you'll Caltrop them to get the Minor Breach. You'll run in. Oh, sorry, you'll Dot. You'll run in. Wow. Run in. You'll jab them a couple times, and then you'll just obviously bear in mind like this isn't gonna. The jabs help because basically it's adding to the damage that we do from our purifying light. So when that bursts, when that explodes, it's gonna be bigger because it's copied up to fifteen thousand worth of damage, and then we just again he died. Um, standing in this, I believe when it's still active. You do kind of get some like health back, I believe. And um, when the effect ends, you and your allies near the enemy are healed for 2289 health or every two seconds, which is fantastic. So, you just make sure you put your buffs up, your recoveries up, reach, come in, the ultimate. I didn't recharge my ultimate, whatever, but you recharge, you hit them with the ult. Again, you smash that pen up as high as you can, taking your damage over, you know, whatever. Put them with one or two jabs at most, honestly, is all you're ever going to need. And then you just purify them. They'll die in one purify. Uh, not purify, radiant. Uh, with one radiant, okay? That's how quick it works. And I'll just show you quickly how high we can get that up. Just by making sure we have everything packed. Six and a half thousand spell damage, 18,000 pen. Crit, again, would be slightly higher with Rallying Cry active. Um, and then with our major and minor resolve, add our recoveries on, you know, we're, we're doing good, right? 
you know, you're walking in this kind of like, this kind of damage output with this kind of recovery this health you know, it's really these are quite decently high numbers considering how spread across it is you know a lot of people will will, will, will really just like they'll, they'll really just focus on kind of one area and i myself have been a, a victim and uh, a fool of doing this and um, finally by hybridizing my actual build rather than just the sets i use I find, you know, my numbers are just amazing now. And don't get me wrong, this build, you do have to learn to play it differently. Am I, would I be lying if I said I didn't run into BGs and just go into my old school habits of just fucking jab, 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 execute. And honestly, it doesn't work anymore. You're going to get slapped. So you want to make sure it's right. But you guys can see yourself. You'll see yourself in the video. You'll see in the gameplay. I do. I do die a few times in this, in this death match. Again, it's, it's, I fall into them bad habits and hopefully, I didn't want to put in a video of me just going all out. Don't get me wrong. I can put in a, I could put in a video there of me not dying or in 21 and 0 and doing over a million damage if I really want to. But that's just showing you guys how good I am at the game, which I don't want this video to be about. I want you guys to be able to see. This was like the second BG I done with this build. So you can see where I'm going into them older habits. All right. I hope you enjoy the gameplay anyway, but that's all from me for the now. Oh, quickly. Sorry, the champion points. Super, super quick, the champion points. We're actually using a couple of the healing CPs as well. We're using Swift Renewal and Focus Many because they help with our heal over time. Um, with our healings done with a single target as well. A heal over time and heal a single target, which is basically what uh, Major Resolve is. So, uh, Resolving Vigor is, sorry. Um, so, again, these these buff that up a little bit. Um, and we get an extra 10%, an extra 10% on both these uh, think, uh, for our healing. Which, again, like I say... Resolving Vigor becomes like a fucking burst heal that then continues. It's fantastic. You'll see my health just pop up when I prop it off sometimes. Um, we're using Fighting Finesse again just to increase our crit damage and crit healing done by 8%. Again, if we get a crit heal from Resolving Vigor, then we're laughing. And then, because as I was showing you guys before, with this build, you kind of have to go in kind of one target at a time. You could 1vx, but you kind of have to take your time with it a little bit. Um, we, we go predominantly for single targets. So Deadly Aim is the main one we pick out of these lot here. Again, um, the red tree is Survival Instincts, Juggernaut, Gains Refuge, and Sustained by Suffering. The, you know, go-to kind of meta that I think a lot of people are running at the moment on their red CPs. Um, it works out really well. Uh, green, if, if you do want to know, doesn't really matter, but I'm running Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, Gifted Rider, and Steed's Blessing. So there you go. Um, yeah, like I was saying, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this hybridization version of the Templar helps you guys a little bit more than the last one did. Um, and again, any feedback, positive or negative, please just do drop a comment below. It really helps us out. And I really appreciate the support you guys have been giving me a lot lately. Um, I am going on holiday, um, so I'm trying to currently build up a lot of videos ready to go out while I'm abroad um, and have some time away from everything. But I don't want you guys to miss out on any content. So again, thank you very much. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. Um, if you didn't, drop a dislike. I don't care. <laughs> Um, and enjoy the gameplay guys again like I say this isn't me going in and just steamrolling everyone this is a hard honest video of me learning how to use this build and I think I finished with around 600,000 damage and about 200 300,000 healing I think so it's not too bad but anyway guys enjoy the video uh, enjoy the rest of the video should I say and I'll catch you all in the next one take care and bye bye
think I made a
Whispers that 